Hi guys, Micah Stevens here, back with you on The Aviator Show today to talk about launching 101. So this is very much a condensed crash course. Maybe that's not the right term to use for this, but it is a, a vomit of information to you guys. And the first thing I'd like to say as a disclaimer is please do not go out to the field and tr attempt to launch or land yourself for the first or fifth time um, based on what you're gonna hear today. You really need professional, a professional third person perspective to give you that real time feedback call to keep you safe. It's not something to mess around with. Please do not take what I'm gonna say today and go out to the field by yourself. For those of you that have come out of training recently and maybe need a brush up on some technique, this is really the video for you guys. Without further ado, let's jump right into the first thing we do when we get ready to launch. And that is to get our wing laid out and get our motor put on our backs in a safe way. Whenever we lay out our wing, we wanna make sure that our wing is A, into the wind and monitor the wind direction. So wind direction and wind speed are two very important factors before we safely clip into our glider. And I won't get too much into the kiting portion or the ground handling portion of the sequence, but um, the basic information is that we need to be into the wind and have that wind speed not be too strong for us. So once we've laid out the wing, we're gonna get our motor on our back. And as soon as we get that motor on the back, then we can start it up. And I like to do that pretty early. I give that motor about a minute or so of warming up time before I actually clip it into my glider and do my full power run up. This is important just for the care and longevity of our motor itself. They are two stroke engines, they vibrate like crazy, and the better you can take care of that exhaust specifically, the more it'll take care of you. So give it a minute or so, clip in, get that motor started, and be sure to start it on your back, not on the ground, please and thank you. Do not ground start a motor. You can go on to Paramotor Facebook group and just scroll through and every fifth post it's someone that ground started our motor and they've got a, a chip off their shoulder, literally. Please start that motor on your back, then walk out to your wing. Then we're gonna clip into our wing. And we've done, we know how to do this from the ground handling, so I'm not gonna go into that today. But once we clip into the glider, we're gonna grab those A's, grab those brakes, just like we normally would. We're gonna find our center. And when we find our center, we wanna be sure that our arms are back when we do this. If our arms are forward or we're looking behind us as we find our center, it'll, it won't be centered, right? Our, our muscles are never totally symmetrical, but our skeletal system is. So if we can kind of move those arms back as far as they'll go, find our center from there, keep our eyes up and forward on the horizon, that will kind of line up everything for us. We're gonna to step towards the tension we feel, left or right, take two steps back, and then take two deep breaths. Taking those deep breaths oxygenates our mind and body for the following sequence. It helps us think clearly, and it prevents us from rushing into the sky and getting ahead of ourselves mentally from where we are physically. So we want those two things to be even. We want our mental and our physical to be at the same place through this launch. And if our mental starts to get in the air before our physical, then we tend to start rushing things and it looks less than tidy. And then we can go through our sequence. We have the secret ingredient list right above my head here. We've got two phases, the kiting phase or ground handling phase and the launching phase. Because obviously today we're talking more about the launching phase, but just to um, go through it step by step, the first step is to inflate the glider, right? We inflate that wing up, we guide those A's up, we release the A's, that's our second step. And then we're in that control phase. Step left, if the wing's dipping left, pull that right hand down, but keep moving forward. A helpful tip for people is that speed is life, speed is control. So without, it's like um, a rudder on a boat. If our boat doesn't have enough speed, that rudder is not gonna do anything through that water. Air is a fluid, just like water is. So the concepts are very similar if you have any water experience. So with that being said, speed is life, speed is control. We are under control and now we have this red line that divides our transition uh, between the two phases. And this is really a step to be taken seriously. 
This red line indicates our, our time to relax, settle into some power, let that, that motor push us along the field, and then to check our wingtips. Make sure everything looks good, feels good. Let's make sure that um, we are feeling good, our heart's feeling good, our gut's feeling good. Everything is lining up perfectly. That is what that red line is for. And I see students taking this step. And when I do, the rest of their launch tends to be so much smoother, more intentional, and it's more of a gradual accelerating event instead of this grab and power and hope. So like I said, there's no room for hope in aviation. We want to make sure everything looks and feels intentional and that's going to make you look cool, which is the most important thing. That's the initial sequence to that red line. Now let's get into the nitty gritty of launching our paramotor, getting ourselves off the ground and doing so in a way that is safe and comfortable. The first thing we've got is posture on this list. Now posture really we want to have that posture in before we bring in too much power. With that being said, we can have power early on, even before the inflation. Power can help this wing come up behind us. And if we keep that power through the release and into the control, everything tends to lock in really nicely. So if we can have power early on, that's okay. But I do want to say that if you have too much power or you're inflating that glider and you grab power, now we're into a really high risk profile of getting a line snagged and having our hand pulled back behind us and into a propeller. I've picked up fingers off the field before from this and it's not a fun thing. So please be careful when you are inflating the glider with power. With that being said, if we have some power early, we can get into this posture a lot easier. So this posture comes in nicely when we have something to lean back against and we have something to kind of trust lean into. It's very much um, what, what I call trusting the thrust. Trust the thrust, let that motor push you across the ground, and we can get up to 50% per percent or so on most motors without getting too far ahead of ourselves. So we get that posture in and we've got our control of the glider, we're checking our wingtips, now we're into the power portion of the launch, right? So this is where we, if everything feels good, we start bringing that power smooth to full. And it really is smooth to full. We don't wanna just jolt that power on because again, then we're getting into this mental position of we're not really sure where we're at and physically I'm in a different place. So smooth to full allows us to keep mentally with it and then as we start moving across this field at a fast rate, our legs are just spinning underneath us. That's one concern students have is, well, how are my feet gonna keep up with the motor? And that wing is now holding you up. As soon as we start picking up speed, that wing is gradually picking you up. It's picking you up, it's picking you up. And once we get to this full on long stride sprint, we're really not holding any weight of the motor on our back anymore. And it's just kind of like we're floating across the ground until we start floating in the air. Right? So we come onto that full power, we hold that full power, and we can leave the ground just like this. But there is one more step that kind of is the icing on the cake for our launch, and that is finally pressure. And pressure is just like adding flaps to an airplane. Right? So you'll be in that control pressure of steering the wing, and then as soon as you are at that full power and you're running like crazy, Let's bring that pressure just an inch or two lower to really add those flaps and get us off the ground. We don't bring in pressure earlier than this because that can have the wing lagging back behind you and you don't want to start speeding up with that wing starting to come back behind you. This could be a parachutal stall sort of setup. So we want to keep those hands flying. We want to let that wing fly and we want to pick up as much speed underneath it and then we can apply those flaps to really kind of pop ourselves off the ground. For those of you that have done any sort of firearms training, I like to use the example of firing a weapon. And when you're being taught by the instructor, he will tell you to not anticipate the round leaving the barrel, all right? So you're just squeezing that trigger, squeezing that trigger. And when that round finally does ignite, you should be surprised by it in a way. And the reason being is that you don't want to slap the trigger to have that uh, barrel move slightly. It's part of a follow through sort of technique. So you want to keep that sight right on the target. You squeeze that trigger gently and then you should be surprised when that round leaves the barrel and it's going to nail the target because you weren't anticipating it leaving the barrel. Translating that to paramotors, we should be surprised when our feet leave the ground. 
we've gone through this ingredients list, we've put the cake in the oven, and we're just waiting for it to happen. And then after 20 minutes, we pull it out of the oven, and it's a beautiful cake. But we don't want to just slam it in the oven and then pull it out 10 minutes later, hoping that it's a good cake. We apply every technique in the sequence in order, and then if everything has gone according to plan, we'll be off the ground at full power, climbing out. I did draw a diagram here of posture. And one of the things that we see students do pretty poorly early on is get from this running position into this running position. And it makes sense, right? We've never ever in our lives, unless we are being really silly, have done any sort of running like this. This is just not normal for us, and reasonably so. But notice, I drew an, an arrow pointing where the thrust is pushing. So our, our pilot here is getting ready to launch. He's got his hands up in that control position, maybe a little far forward. Ideally, we were back a little bit behind our ears. But he, it's hard to get into that hand position when we're leaning forward, and also we're pushing ourselves into the ground. Right? What this will result in, if we come onto full power and we're able to withstand that amount of force on our legs, what it's going to result in is a really aggressive scoop when we finally do get picked up with that wing. So we really want to eliminate this tendency here of leaning forward, use that power to lean back into, get stable there, and then smooth to full. And you can see that that's just a much more, you're already practically getting pushed into the sky that when the wing does start lifting you, A, it's going to happen a lot sooner, and B, it's going to feel a lot more natural and it's going to be a lot less forceful. Along these lines, we have to keep those feet moving, right? It's very easy to sit down. It's almost impossible to avoid being forced to sit down when we're leaning forward versus if we're leaning back, our hamstring is pushing that seat board back into the motor. But if we are leaning forward and we're running like this, that seat board is so much easier to actually scoop us into the, into the seat and force us to sit down and break a propeller as we leave the ground. Not a good thing. Try to lean back, keep those feet just free spooling, but use those legs to keep that seat board back there. With the launching sequence, there's a lot of good driving analogies, one of which is keeping our hands pretty stable on the steering wheel as we're driving fast. The same is true with our hands on the brake toggles, right? We want to kind of keep those hands stable and still, and we want to keep those hands near our ear cups, right? This is a neutral position. If we're pushing our hands forward or we're holding our hands out here, we're actually activating brake. If I come over here to my toggle set, any distance I pull away from this pulley is pulling brake, right? I want to keep the, this toggle, take the slack out of the toggle, but don't have it out here and don't have it out in front of you. Otherwise, you're going to be inadvertently and unknowingly pulling more brake pressure, slowing that wing down, giving you an inaccurate sense of lift. So keep those hands close. Keep those hands close. Another driving analogy is the fact that the faster you go, the more authority your inputs have on the, on the car. Right? So if you're just in a parking lot, this much steering input is not going to be really noticed at all. But you start going 55 miles an hour, and then this amount of steering input is going to throw you off the road. So the same is true for our paragliders. As soon as we start running, the faster we go, the less input that we need to keep that glider sort of situated and over our head. So just keep that in mind. Speed is life. Speed is control. Let's talk about how the wind conditions can affect your launch. The wind is the most variable factor that we deal with. My old mentor in the sport would always say that Mother Nature is a fickle mistress and we've got to be very attentive to her temperament, if you will. So the wind speed, if it's changing and if it's gusting like crazy, the, the first thing you're going to notice is a lot of pitch oscillations. You're really trying to keep your wing behind you as the pilot for the most part, right? We want to keep that wing up over our head, but we, we don't want to let that wing get in front of us at any point. So the wind speed can really change this. It can really make it challenging to balance the surge. And what I mean by that is if our wing is back here and we're just running along and the, and the wind speed suddenly picks up, it's going to hit the trailing edge of our glider down. Uh, it's going to hit the underside of our glider and it's going to force it forward 
and ahead of us. So we've got to be really careful balancing the speed with our legs, balancing the power with our fingers, and balancing the trailing edge of our glider with our hands. And the way I like to do this is really just feel it with my hands and just set my legs at a speed, set my throttle at a, at a power, and then I'll kind of adjust my hands to keep my wing behind me. Whenever my wing has lagged back, it wants to surge forward, especially if I have enough speed. Just be aware that your wind speed can really change how your wing comes up behind you during the inflation, and it'll also affect how quickly you leave the ground. Be present physically and mentally. Assuming you're a newer pilot and you're trying to get your launches to be more clean, the, one of the environmental factors we want to pay attention to, aside from wind speed and direction, is also your en environment, your physical environment, how much space you have. If you have to drive an extra hour to get to a field that has wide open space, I might consider doing that until I really can dial in my launches. You want to maximize your physical margins as well as your mental margins. And your mental margins really do affect the way you perform physically. So the more space that you can have of free open, uh, open mind space, if you will, the more clean your launches will become. Dial those in a little bit tighter and then bring it to your local LZ. But we wanna make sure we're maximizing our margins as possible, as much as possible for an earlier stage pilot. Another good thing to think about is that as a pilot is launching, he doesn't care about the runway behind him. Make sure that you've got as much space as possible. If you're going to a crowded fly-in, let's go to that corner of the field that no one else is willing to travel to because they've got to hoof their motor out there. But get yourself away from other people, away from objects, into clean space. That way you can really take your time and stay present. For you newer pilots as well, we also want to keep in mind who is around us, who's watching us. If there are people watching you, what, what is our relationship to that person? Um, if you're just going home after training and you're about to fly by yourself for the first time, I would really, you know, maybe send a text to someone and let them know that you're going out, but try to do this on your own so that there's no added pressure. Our mental margins are really important to maintain, and if we start having people around us or we're going to that crowded fly-in for the first time we're flying out of training, that's not a good situation, and we're going to end up getting into confirmation bias. And all that means is there's going to be more of a push for you to fly. We're going to be more susceptible to peer pressure, and that performance pressure is also going to be way up as well. So do your best to maximize your mental margins. Make sure that you're feeling good physically. Once you get out to your field, do another check of you know do your check of the gear, but also do a check of yourself. Make sure that you know you didn't just end a fight with your wife by storming out of the room. Um, let's make sure that we are actually mentally fit to fly. Now we're going to go ahead and go into some examples. So let's go check it out. All right, guys. So here we are on the video review portion of this video. So we're going to take a look at some live examples of good, bad, and ugly. Here's a tow example. And towing is quite a bit different. When you come to training, we like to give you some towing experience just so you have some familiarity with the landing sequence. And this. Um, is helpful because now you don't have a motor on your back, so you don't have the risk of that. It's less weight, so the landing's a little bit slower. It's a good way to crawl, walk, run into the sky. So let's check out this toe. All so right, this goes. Keep coming. Keep the start back. Release. Pressure. Keep good running. Release. Keep good running. pressure. He's keeping pressure. that wing behind good. him. Good. Hands all the way back up. Just a little bit of right pressure, aiming for flesh. That's a textbook toe right there. We can see how as he runs forward, those arms are staying back and that wing stays nice and open. That leading edge is consistently gulping air and it's a constant rising of that wing. Looking good. Keep coming. Keep the start back. Release. Pressure. Keep running. Keep he running. pulls pressure to pressure. keep that wing behind him good. and he just he runs up. right off the just ground. a little bit of right pressure aiming for flesh. Good. Let's hold that. Very nice. Right. Whenever you're ready. So now we're into the taxi practice. This is the walking portion of the crawl, walk, run. So if we freeze this frame right here, if I had to comment on something Jordan is doing um, well, he's staying consistent in the, pat in the power. So that motor is helping him push through the inflation and as soon as he releases and controls, he's staying on that power 
And a lot of times I'll watch students come off the power as soon as they release. It's a sympathetic muscle reaction of releasing those A's and then releasing that, these two fingers as well to come off the power. He does a really good job staying consistent in that power and continuing to move forward. If I had to comment on something that he could have done a little bit better, it's getting those arms back a little bit. While his hands are at a nice control pressure zone of feeling the wing, when you push those hands forward like he's doing here, you're pulling a lot more pressure than you're intending to. So, and similarly, if you wanna pull some right pressure, that right hand will come down, but if you're holding this left hand out, you're, you're having to overcome four to six inches of brake pressure that you're not intending to pull. So get those hands in line with our body. This is where we can calculate how much pressure we're holding. It's really hard to know how much pressure we're holding if our hands are out to the side or if they're out in front of us. So get those hands in line with your body. Green zone is from our ears down to the shoulders. This is where we should stay during our kiting. Maybe down to the nipples, roughly, but we don't want to get lower than that because now we're going to stall the wing out and we're going to slow that wing down when we're trying to go fly. So keep that speed Keep, keep those hands closer to neutral. So you can see now how his wing is starting to lag back behind him just a little bit. And I think that's because his hands are a little far forward. That and the fact that we don't have much wind at this point. But he continues moving forward. He continues in that power. And now he's settling into some power. That power is helping him relax and it's allowing him to let his legs kind of cruise. And that's exactly the phase that we're looking to click into before we go fly, is let's bring in the power, let's stabilize everything at that point. We check our wing tips, we double check that we're feeling good mentally and physically, the wing's feeling good, and we're getting all green lights to go fly. We're not just mashing power as soon as we release the A's. Hands down, spin towards the low side. Yep. Left hand down more, left hand down more. Good, good job, good job, Jordan. Okay. Next, we've got. All right, so let's talk about the environmental factors on this one. I can see how he's not really moving forward very quickly, and the wing is coming up pretty strong. So I know there's a lot of wind. I can also look at this yellow glider off to the side here and it's just kind of hanging out on the ground, but it's already starting to inflate just by hanging out flat on the ground. So there's a lot of wind, which means that as you inflate the glider and you lift those A's to guide that wing up, as soon as it starts to get out of this drogue shoot position that's behind us, it's gonna wanna surge forward. And unless we're quick to get in that control pressure and we time our release perfectly, that wing is going to do that and it's gonna do what it did here, which is a little bit of a frontal. So let's play it forward again. So it, we release and he keeps moving forward with quite a bit of power. So his wings behind him and he's adding power and that is just the prime recipe for a really strong surge. And his hands are really high up at the, at the same time. So unless he's got really strong fast legs and really accurate throttle setting, he's gonna take a frontal no matter what. If you're doing a forward launch into a substantial amount of wind, you're gonna need to be quick with the control pressure and really check the surge. So inflate, release, check the surge, get back into that control position to let that wing sort of find its equilibrium above your head. So, and then at that point, he actually adds power as he takes his frontal. And again, that's a sympathetic reaction because you feel like there's no wing above you or behind you so you're going to gas it to move forward into that that open space if you will and that's what happened here and thankfully thankfully he uh he figured out how to kill it in time before just hanging on to that power because that could be a bit of a situation <laughs> and also fletch is mentioning here that he didn't release his A's. So that's a really good point. If I can, I can't zoom in here, so I, it's hard to, hard to analyze this frame by frame, but Fletch is mentioning the fact that he didn't release his A's and I can see that now, that he's holding onto those A's through the inflation. So here he should be off those A's and he should be staying on that power and now 
bringing in some brake pressure to control. So it's just a timing thing. As a new pilot, this is why we don't like too much wind um, for doing forwards. Ideally, three to four miles an hour as a newer pilot is your perfect wind setting. So a little, a little strong, it seems like, for these guys. But smooth seas never made a skill. Yeah, how does the saying go? Smooth seas never makes a skilled sailor, something like that. A little lighter winds here. Good release timing. Add that power to help you move. This wing is lagging off to the side because it doesn't have speed. Similar to like a rudder on a boat, if you don't have enough water passing over that surface, it's going to want to kind of flop around on you. The same is true with the wing. So if you don't have enough speed underneath that wing, the wing is just going to want to lag off to one side or the other, especially in light winds. AJ makes a, an excellent call here. Just kill it. it. You know, Could we save this from this configuration here? Potentially but it's better to just kill it, reset, and try again instead of powering through something that could risk cutting lines and getting your, um, getting your glider messed up. So best to just kill it and turn around. Nicely done. That's what I call a successful practice launch. Good release timing. Hands are in a good spot. They could be a little lower. So. Our hands are up nice and high. We're not really feeling the wing with our hands. And that is something that can really be helpful to a new pilot that doesn't really have the wing sense. They're relying a lot on the harness being um, a form of communication to their body and their mind. But now the wing is connected to metal swing arms that's connected to a metal frame that's then connected to the harness that's then connected to you. So with this being said, your hands are still immediately attached to the wing. So as soon as you release, bring in some pressure to get a feel for this wing. Not too much, because then you're gonna bring the wing down, but just enough to feel where that wing's at. And this pilot here doesn't really have much pressure at all. And he's just kind of hoping things work out and running forward, which is a good start. It's a good start. He's listening to the instructor. All right, now let's, let's check this out. So he is, willing this wing you can see with the glider lines the wing is off to the his left and he's leaning right okay this is not a a horrible position to be in because you're weight shifting that right riser down and that is helping the wing come back up a little bit but in this case it's just a mental thing he's leaning away from that low side when if anything you should kind of be leaning towards it to get towards that low side similarly his left hand is helping that wing come down on that side. He's got a lot of right brake pressure, which is a good thing, but if his left hand is pulling almost the equivalent amount, you can see how his hands are kind of also leaning away from that wing, and that's a poor configuration of getting this wing back overhead. So, But it's a great example of a new pilot tendency. So we wanna get those hands to be pistons with our piston direction being at the pulleys, towards the pulleys. Regardless of where those pulleys are at, our hands are pistons. If we're pulling one side, the other side goes back towards the other pulley. And it just takes practice. It takes repetition and it takes time and takes lots of kiting, which is why we say for every hour of flying, do an hour of kiting at least. It's very close and he actually pulls it off. He gets the swing back over his head with a lot, of, a lot more effort than we would really hope to, to give. But we can see those hands, again, coming forward. So we're pulling more brakes. We're not really feeling the wing. We're pretty tense in this situation. He's what I call launching at gunpoint. He's pretty stressed out. We want to breathe, relax those arms, let those arms come back. Think about leading forward with those elbows. And that's really going to help you start bringing in that posture when the time comes. Oh, Steve. Back in the Dinellan days here. Keep that power. Good. You can see how this wing is really lagging behind him. And the only thing that's going to get this wing inflated, you can see this glider gradually inflate here. You can see it pressurized from the bottom to the leading edge. It's pretty cool to watch. And the only thing that's going to get that wing up and over his head is getting those hands up towards the pulley. You can see how there's quite a bit of deflection in that trailing edge and moving quickly underneath this wing. And we can do that, we can move quickly by adding some power. So he adds some power. 
and it just doesn't quite go. It doesn't quite go. So he, he wavers on that power a little bit. And similarly, he's looking straight up. He's looking for that wing that's up there. And that's not the right call. The reason being is that when we look up, we always tend to slow down. We're never going to move very quickly if we're looking up. It messes with our vestibular system in our ears. So keep looking forward. Keep your eyes forward on that point. You're trying to give that tree or pole or truck a big hug with those open arms as you run towards it. Let's try it again, Steve. So we get those arms back. We're inflating the glider. Okay, check out his hand position here with the A's. So ideally, as you come through the inflation, your hands should be along the hoop section. I know it's kind of spooky because there's a prop back there and it's potentially spinning, but hopefully we're not adding too much power through that inflation to make that a risk. We're just bolstering ourselves with some power to help pressurize that wing. We're inflating the glider with a propeller wash as we inflate the, that wing. But our hands, in this case, are forward here, and we can see how our leading edge just wants to take a nosedive forward, and it doesn't want to inflate. And whenever our hands are forward, they're never going to be symmetrical. His left hand is further forward than his right hand. Our, our arms and our muscular system is not symmetrical, but our skeletal system is more so. So if you can keep your arms back along that hoop section, you're going to have a nice, easy consistent inflation. But we can see how that left side is tucking down and we take a little bit of a frontal. And at that point, unless he really runs fast and adds power at a precise time, it's not gonna work out. All right, back to this class, we've got Jordan here. So we're running fast and we're running forward and we're starting to slide to that low side just instinctually. This is why kiting is really a helpful thing for us. It's an instinctual thing to start sliding to the low side at this point, the only thing that could help Jordan is to add some power to help him get through that inflation portion. Because whenever that wing wants to, if that wing is staying in this drogue shoot position, it's going to want to pivot quickly behind you. So you really want to get through that power zone, through that drogue shoot orientation as soon as possible so that this wing settles over your head and then you can control it. But in this case, the wing comes up sideways. He's releasing and he's pulling some pressure on the left side, but it's just too, it's either a combination of too much pressure and not enough speed and not enough power. At this point, if he added power, which I called for, but yeah, at this point, it, it's, it's a, a done deal. He's getting his hips not square to the wing, and that's an important factor. We keep our hips square to the wing no matter what and then we get that wing square to the wind. So ideally, those two things are consistent. We're square to the wing and we're square to the wind through the entire inflation process. A, a good, successful taxi practice is a really, it's aviation experience. All of these failed launches are all aviation experience. It helps us progress. All right, we got Travis who's in this current class. He is inflating this glider, and the tendency I've noticed with Travis is that he tends to keep his hands down and back instead of lifting those A's up. So in this instance, we see this leading edge sort of getting crumpled, crumpled inwards. And this wing wants to fly, it wants to go, but if you look at his hand position, it's still fairly low along this hoop section. So as soon as you start feeling tension on those lines and you feel that wing coming off the ground, it's time to start bringing those hands up so that we encourage the wing up instead of holding the wing back. But we do get those hands up, the wing gets under control, we re and we're holding onto those A's still. We can see where his hand is on the brake, and he's still holding the A's, and that's what causes this frontal. A full frontal. Okay, let's try again. Again, we're hanging, hanging on to those A's pretty darn low. Hanging on to those A's way down here. And he's done an excellent job correcting this, by the way. But it's still a great example. There's a, a tendency, especially as dudes, women are better at this sport for this reason. But as dudes, we want to muscle that wing forward. So we're pulling those A's forward and down, and we're trying to muscle this wing up 
and that's just harming us. We're just closing that leading edge. We're not in a good position to keep this wing flying. And then when we release, our hands are still forward. And that you can see how that's def deforming that trailing edge. It's not letting the wing fly. Props him for checking his wing tip though. He's like, what is going on back there? And how can I fix this situation? And the answer is kind of, it's too late, but let's get those hands up and let's keep running fast. Lift those A's, Travis, lift those A's, lift those A's, bring those A's down a little bit, but we brought in power. So that's the key point. Even though we brought those hands down with those A's, and that, uh, that leading edge is, is getting pulled down, we release it here and we add power. In other words, we're adding speed to the equation and that is what gets the wing up over our head. A little strong, a little blippy in that power and it kind of adds a surge to our wing. Thankfully, we have this tendency of holding too much pressure so that wing stays behind us and it doesn't surge forward. So we have Dave of this class. Let's check it out, Dave. Nice. Okay, the big thing that I want to point out here is he goes with the wing. The wing is your lead dance partner. So if it starts going to the right, you start going to the right. And ideally, you can get that wing back under control and sort of start leading this dance once the wing is under control. But for the inflation, wing's your dance partner, you're staying square to it, and then you're getting it square to the wing, the wind, excuse me. So he's adding power, he's looking ahead. That is key for keeping speed up, keeping that wing alive. He's stepping to the right because he's keeping his hips square to the wing. Good, and he's responding to that full power command that the instructor is giving him. And it's a smooth progression all the way into the sky. Full power. Something that he's missing out of this equation is pressure. So when you have pressure in and you come onto that full power, it's more of a definitive liftoff. While you're not expecting to leave the ground, as we mentioned before, it's gonna be a lot quicker of a launch if you can bring those hands down to your shoulders, adding flaps to that airplane, and that's why airplanes do it, to get off the ground a little bit sooner. So if you can add those flaps, you'll get off the ground just a touch sooner. Down to the shoulders is what we're looking for. Locking those elbows down to our ribs or against the swing arms, and trying to touch those toggles to our shoulders. Very nice, very nice. All right, so we got some switchy wins here. We got Horky, one of our instructors, launching here. She adds some power to get the wing under control. Come on, Whitney. Don't hit a tree. <laughs> and very nice. So the wing is, the wind is off of her left shoulder at this point. And as she brings the wing up, the wing wants to weather vane into that wind. She lifts those A's up, lifts those A's up, releases and adds power and adds pressure all kind of at the same time to A, check the surge with the power, making sure that that wing doesn't fall back down. And she's keeping those feet moving forward while checking her wingtip. So she's doing a lot all at once. This is what it looks like when you know what you're doing. Checking wingtip, checking wingtip. Now she's rolling onto that smooth to full because she knows that wing is over her head. So all she has to do is bring in that, that full power, keep those hands down, keep running, lean back ideally, which she's doing. And that's gonna be, yep, yeah, there's the posture. And she's off the ground. Very nice. This is our travel class, it looks like. Come on, buddy. All right. Yeah, that wing was just off to the side. Again, kind of a similar similar thing. We're leaning away from it. And you can see how it's weight shifting nicely to get that wing back over, but we're not moving to that side when we're leaning away from that low side. So that's what happened there. Okay. So if we listen to this one, I just want you guys to notice the, um, the power setting. So it's high initially, which is good. 
but notice her feet. Her feet kind of pause. She's, she's relying on that motor to help inflate this glider and not using the, the fundamental principle of moving those feet. When I was a lineman in uh, college, my football coach would always say, if you stop moving your feet, you lose the fight. Now, whether or not I was a lineman in college, I'll leave that up to you to decide, but the principle is true for our paramotors. If we do not keep our feet moving off the ground, we're not gonna be moving forward. So we've gotta pick up those feet. The wing lags for a second, and just a second too long, and it actually starts coming back down to the ground. Excellent abort. Very nice abort. Get it up, get it up. Very nice. So we stay on that power. We stay consistent through that power, but we're still hanging on to those A's. And we're holding those A's down a little bit. It does a frontal, but a frontal is not the end of the world, right? Because if we stay consistent in that power and stay consistent in that speed, that wing will pop back open as long as we don't add too much power. So in that case, it didn't quite work out. So if we take a look here, we can see that his hands are awfully high. So he's not feeling the wing. He's not adding that control pressure to get that sensation of where the wing's at. He's just leaving those hands kind of high for a really controlled launch. And what this leads to is the potential for a frontal. So if you're, if you're feeling like you're coming onto that power smooth to full, Start bringing those hands down to feel where that wing's at, and it provides you with insurance, insurance of making sure that the wing doesn't do a frontal on you as you're running full speed with 60% power or more. So bring those hands down to, your, down to your shoulders. He does it after he leaves the ground, which is still good because we wanna get you altitude quickly. We wanna get off the ground and away from that hard rock as fast as possible so that if your motor does quit at an inopportune time being shortly after launch that we have altitude or time to deal with the situation so all right check it out nice oh that's smooth really good example of why we want to implement that posture before bringing in too much power. Oftentimes we can get off the ground mentally before we are physically, and I think that's what's happening here. He's just um, taking the green light from that good inflation, which it was, it was a nice inflation, and he's got control of the glider, now he's just thinking, let's leave the ground, I'm ready to go. But we want to lean back, as Byler is saying here on the radio, lean back into that thrust so that we don't get scooped so violently in the seat. And that's exactly what happens here. We can see that the wing is picking up the motor. He takes that invitation to sit. It's almost, it's almost something that is inevitable. It's so hard to resist that scoop if you're not leaning back initially to pre-scoop yourself in the motor. That's what we're looking for. We want you to, I want to see some pre-scoopage before you go fly. Very close to a prop, prop strike. Words are hard, but he keeps those feet down and moving along and then he gets off the ground, so. Still counts, man. You still enjoyed a, a flight as a bird. Pretty sweet. All right. Let's check this out. We got a lot of wind here. I can tell because he's leaning far forward, right? He's leaning way the heck forward. Ideally, if we've got a lot of wind, we can just bolster ourselves with some power and we can stand straight up. Because what happens and what you're seeing in this video here is that as those hands are down and back and those lines are starting to pick up the frame behind him and it's almost forcing him to lean forward so ideally we can stand straight up before we go to inflate the glider that power is going to help stabilize us so we don't get pulled backwards but ideally we can do a reverse launch in this situation so that we're able to lean that motor away from the wing and use that weight to help just bring up this glider nice and easily just by leaning back instead of trying to muscle forward. So, But that being said, the lines do come around the cage and he gets control of it. You can see how responsive that wing is to his hands and that is because we've got so much wind. Add some power. If we get those hands up a little bit, that wing will fly a little nicer. We call this the uh, 
the Jesus. <laughs> so he's, he's holding his hands straight out to the side and that's more pressure than we want to pull. Because think about it, if we're pushing away, any distance away from the pulley is causing brake pressure. So this is the right amount of brake pressure. This is almost too much brake pressure. So there's that fact, but there's also the fact that when our hands are out wide like this, we don't know that we're symmetrical. We may be pulling more pressure on one side and that might cause us to leave the ground in a steeper turn. Get those hands close to your body, stay coordinated, and it's more you're able to calculate the amount of pressure you're pulling with your hands close to your body. That being said, pretty good launch. I'd like to see some posture as well. Um, Cause he, again, kinda, kinda does the electric slide here with his feet as he, as he gets scooped into the sky. But keep those feet down, keep those feet running. Use those leg straps. A lot of students feel hesitant to actually rely on those leg straps, but they should be the things getting loaded, not the seat. Not yet. Beautiful. Keep it coming, keep it coming, keep it coming. And release. Step right, pull left a little bit. Add a touch of power. There you go. Nice. We wish that only wingtip and wingtip. So he's looking straight up, which is why AJ is asking him to check his wingtips. Rather than looking up at the wing, we want to get fixated on the horizon or our instructor, not the wing itself. Because if we're looking up, we're not moving forward. If we're looking to the left, we're moving to the left. If we're looking to the right, we're moving to the right. Target fixation guides our body and it can lead into an oscillation on launch. So if you have a tendency to overanalyze the wing and you're feeling like your launches aren't as smooth as they could be, try looking out at the horizon more so. Use that anchor point, that visual anchor point to pull you into the sky. That might help you. Very nice. Look where you're going. Very nice. So good. Pretty good posture. He could have used a touch of pressure to help him get off the ground, but all in all, that was a nice launch. Keep it coming. Nice, stay on that power. As soon as you leave the ground, stay on that power. Up. My, uh, my first launch, I got 10 feet off the ground and I thought I was at 300 and I just dropped the power. And my instructor was, power, power, power. We're gonna die. <laughs> yep, very nice. His eyes are down at the ground and that's just a, a stress thing. You know, we're, we're focusing on what we're doing. We're trying to listen to the instructor and, and follow his commands but try to relax, take a breath, keep your eyes long on the horizon. Uh, once you're to that power setting, bring in that pressure and keep leading forward with that belt buckle. We don't really have a whole lot of posture here and we can see how he gets a little scooped into that seat. You can see that frame start to dip down as it scoops him in. So we wanna kinda lean back into that and a lot of it starts with our head. So if our head is down, our posture is forward, that scoop is gonna happen a little bit more violently and we're gonna be close to the ground as we as we leave the ground. So we wanna make sure that we're keeping our head up, keeping our, our elbows leading forward, keeping our hands back and our belt buckle out. That's gonna really help. And then stay on that power. Altitude is your friend. Come on, buddy, come on. There you go, keep it coming, keep it coming. Touch the power, keep it coming. Keep it coming. Such a nice inflation. This guy is keeping his hands back and wide and you can see just how clean and crisp that inflation is. We've got a lot of wind in this case, well, not a lot, but enough wind to make it easy on him, but he's adding that power to bolster him through this inflation. Great release. I'd like to see those hands come in to stay calculated, checking his wingtips, eyes forward. Get some po posture now, get some posture. So again, with that thrust angle being at the ground, you can see how he takes this, this sort of stutter step and it's almost a trip and a fall. Thankfully, he's got full power and he's committing, and I use that term lightly, to this launch with power. Ideally, we're never committing to the launch. We just kind of add the ingredients, we put it in the oven and out comes a beautiful cake. Same is true for our launches. We're just applying the principles and we're letting the principles work rather than trying to force them to. All right, we're at the beach midday, doing a reverse launch here, a little cravat on the left side, but 
our pilot here is holding some left pressure. Maybe it'll work. All right, let's try again. Very nice. As soon as you turn around and it's this windy, you want to add some power, right? Because that you have the tendency of pulling too much brake pressure and that's going to pull you backwards and potentially land you on your butt and into a turtle. So we want to get those hands up a little bit higher. Let that wing fly a little bit so that you're not getting the a risk of getting pulled backwards. And also add some power. As soon as you turn around and doing a reverse launch, add some power to bolster you in the control. But he's taking his time. He's making sure everything looks good, feels good. Full power, leaning back nicely. Love the posture, check that out. He's got some really nice posture here and he's just taking confident steps forward. Those hands are down to add that pressure and it's just an effortless launch. The beach flying is so magical. All right, we got Judd Man here inflating his mojo. It's a windy day, sweet little slow-mo. Notice how he switches his, uh, his hands He's holding the A's with his right hand and he switches the A's to his left hand here. He's grabbing those A's with his left hand, pulling that right hand down. That's the cool thing about doing a reverse launch is that you can see exactly what that wing is doing and you're able to control the inflation super well with some practice. But this is why we say kite because all the skill that you're seeing Judson apply here was not built with a motor on his back. It was built with a kiting harness on. Very nice, Judson. He's just adding that, that pressure and being a, a pretty light dude, we can get off the ground pretty darn effortlessly with just some, some pressure and some power. Not pressure that I would want a student to pull, right? Because his hands are out wide, but he knows exactly how much pressure he's pulling because he's Judson and he's got that power setting in. He knows exactly where everything is. He could be blindfolded in doing this, I promise you. Just a little, little shout out to my buddy Judd Man. What a nice launch. That's how easy it can be with just some diligent practice. We got Nell, Nell Farewell here at launching at high altitude. She's got perfect form. Those hands are nice, nice and far and wide. Releasing and we're just adding power and going for a jog because at high altitude, we've got four things working against us. The motor is not producing as much power. The prop isn't producing as much thrust. The wing's not producing as much lift. And the pilot is not producing as much energy. Those lungs aren't working like they used to down at altitude, sea level especially, which is where we're at here in Florida. So let's play this out. Still running, still running, pulling pressure, and we do get off the ground nicely. What an awesome, awesome launch. Nell is a, a fairly low hour pilot, and she just has the finesse. You know, she's. She's watching her wingtip come up. Releasing, controlling, adding that power smooth to full. It's not this wavering, jabby power setting. She just comes onto that power, she applies that brake pressure, and like an elegant butterfly, off she goes. So nice. Reese, on the other hand, oh boy. Oh boy, on the water. <laughs> so. What happens here, Reese? Let's check it out. So our wing is already dipping to the left. Looks like we may have been asymmetrical with our center. So we can see this right side of the wing is popping up so much earlier than the left side. We may not have been perfectly centered when we went to inflate this glider. There's a lot of things working against Reese in this situation, mainly the mental factors, right? So he's got two judgmental people in a boat watching him. He's got the water there. He's running over rocks, not a very smooth surface. The tendency to make an, a mistake early on, a passive mistake early on, like not finding your center perfectly, goes up dramatically, as opposed to being on the grass, a nice open field where your wind is perfect as well. So a lot of, a lot of things stacked up against my brother Reese here as he inflates his glider. He's got a lot of power in, and that kind of forces him to make the stutter step as these lines kind of lurch around the, the side of the cage here. But he resets, and he does it again. And I think he does it better this time. Similar thing, doesn't look like we're quite centered as we bring in this inflation. 
But we release, we control. Come on, buddy. Keeping that power. And he's turning around and cut it down. Not too bad. Again, I think at that point, it's just a consistency with the power thing. So he's wavering on that power a little bit. He's got to get smooth with that throttle. This is looking better. He's got good control of that glider, and now he's bringing in that smooth to full. Nice job, Reese. Again, I think the biggest thing was just the throttle. He was a little jabby before with it. He was being a, a dude about it. Full throttle or no throttle. We want, we want to find that smooth to full. Paradigm. Here we got, looks like Josh McGee in the house on his free ride. This guy is a, an absolute monster. I'm following him on Instagram and he's always doing, always doing the free willy thing. Look at that posture. He's immediately into it. He's got that power. He's got the posture already. He's leaning back. He's leading forward with his, his belt buckle or his reserve um, pouch there. And he's just got that power on. He's got that power. He's got the pressure. All it is now is a waiting game. It's just waiting for that wing to pick him up. He's got all of the factors working for him. And he's turning heads while he does it. Josh McGee, everybody. Round of applause. Judd Mann, similar thing. He gets that inflation going, and then, it, okay, all right, show off. Yeah, he gets that inflation going, he leans back into it, full power, he's off the ground, and then he's dragging those tips of his toes. All right, again, I wanna talk about this because <laughs> this is not how a new pilot should be launching their glider. His hands are down in the red zone, and he knows exactly what he's doing. This is the most important thing to, to take away here. He knows exactly how much pressure he's pulling. And I mean, this is Eric Farewell. So he, he, uh, I think he knows how to fly a paramotor. Um, but he, he's got those hands down. He's adding full power. And if that wing starts to come back behind him, he's going to get those hands up a little bit to make sure it doesn't stall. But, and then he's jumping right in the seat. It's horrible form for a new pilot. We really shouldn't even be looking at these guys because they're just, I mean, they're terrible pilots. I, just do as I say, not as I do. This is what we're looking at here. Johnson Q, everybody. Similar, at this point, it's a similar thing, right? Everybody's kind of, kind of got the, the principles dialed in. Lots of wind here for our forward launch. Hey, everybody makes mistakes. Now he's into a reverse. And he'll probably just pull it up right from there. Judson's pulling it up. He's in the reverse. Turn around, adding some power right away. Bolstering himself. Checking his wingtip, making sure it looks good. And off he goes. <laughs> Such a goofy pilot. All right. I don't know who this guy is. Oh, that's Tucker. Who? Tucker who? Yeah. It's all similar, right? They just... The, the six steps of inflate, release, control, posture, power, pressure, translates into like two steps for an experienced pilot because they just combine a few things and they know exactly where the thresholds are to keep this wing under control. And that's why watching YouTube videos and then coming to train is just kind of a bad idea because you've got this expectation that it's going to be a super easy thing and what you don't see is the uh, iceberg below the water and how much experience goes into making these launches look effortless. So, yep, that will conclude our video of Launching 101 and a quick little video review of the good, bad, and ugly. Hope you guys enjoy this content. Seems like we're getting some good feedback. Yeah, so if there's one takeaway you should pull away from this video is to go out to your field and kite like crazy because it's gonna give you that wing sense, as I like to call it, that's going to make you a smooth, calculated, and cool looking pilot out there. So go out to the field, kite, do some lean backs, get into that posture, just get in that muscle memory of leaning back as you move forward, and that's going to help translate to you implementing it with the wing. So if you're feeling like you're struggling, go back to the basics. We want we want to stay brilliant as the in the basics as my old mentor in the sport, Andrew Solano, quick little shout out to him, would say, brilliant in the basics makes a smooth, skilled pilot.
So without any further ado, this will conclude the video. Hope you guys enjoy the content. If you do, leave a like, comment down below if this helps, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Peace.